This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on guys? So Create React App version 2 was released at the beginning of the month. And while there's not too many changes, I think it's worth making a quick video just talking about some of the different changes and features that have been added. So for those of you that don't know, Create React App is the CLI or the command line interface tool that's used to generate React applications and uh, just makes things much easier as opposed to setting up your own Webpack configuration and all that. So let's take a look at, at what's new in version version two. So we have some package updates. Babel is used to compile newer ES6 plus features of JavaScript to be used in all browsers. Babel 7 was released back in September and Create React App 2 now uses version 7, which is faster than previous versions. It has some some new features that are that have been added. If you want to look at the specific features of Babel 7, you can go to babeljs.io. Okay, Webpack 4 is also being used. Webpack is used for bundling. Um, Jest 23 is also included, which is used for testing. It includes new features like interactive snapshot mode and custom matchers. Again, if you want to look at specific features of Jest, you can head over to their website and check out their documentation. All right, so version one of Create React app had SaaS integration, but there was some additional configuration that needed to be done. With version two, you can simply install Node SaaS and you can rename your .css files to .scss and go to town. So it makes working with SaaS a little bit easier. CSS modules allow you to use the same CSS classes across different files without having to worry about conflicts or issues. Um, CSS modules work right out of the box with Create React App 2. You can just import your module using um, this syntax right here. So your module name dot module dot either SCSS or just CSS. Okay, in addition to SAS integration and CSS modules, you also have smaller CSS bundles. You can target modern browsers with your package.json file in the browser list specification. Okay, so you can adjust your styles to only target either the WebKit prefix or the MS prefix whenever necessary. Okay, post CSS has also been added to uh, create React app too. So if you've used version two, the first thing you probably noticed was the landing page change. Okay, so I think it's a more simplistic and and uh, cleaner look or a cleaner page on the left. You can see version one and the new the new look is on the right. Okay, so the core files are pretty much the same. It's just a, a different look. All right, so there's also been changes with how service workers are implemented. Version two now uses Google's Workbox, which is a set of libraries for caching offline assets and working with service workers in a more elegant way than SW Precache. And this will make it easier for you to create progressive web applications using the React framework. So manual proxy configuration, this, there's there's now added support for configuring your own proxy with an express in a full stack app. So you can use like the HTTP proxy middleware module and then create a file on your client in your React application right inside the source folder called setupproxy.js rather than defining a proxy object as we would before. And this is something I'll have to update in my Mern stack course. So just be aware of that. Um, so here's some other features and changes. Basically, you now have packages that are written for the latest version of Node. I'm sorry, you can use packages written for the latest version of Node. Before people were having some issues with certain packages for Node 10, um, you can import an SVG as a React component directly. Before, what you would do is import an SVG and then add it to the source attribute for an image. Well, now you can actually just import it and use it as an actual component, which is pretty cool. There's also something called yarn plug and play. Usually when you run yarn install, your packages are installed and then cached inside the node modules folder with plug and play. Instead of doing that, a cry, uh, a cry, a new file that contains static resolution tables is created. And this file contains what packages are available on the dependency tree. Okay, it also includes how they're linked and where they're located. This feature is still in experimental mode, um, so just be aware of that. 
All right, so now for braking changes. So there's not too many, nothing really serious to worry about, at least in my opinion. Node 6 is no longer supported. You should be using a much later version than that anyway. Support for some older browsers like IE 9 to 11 require a separate package. There is a link on the latest React blog post that can tell you more about that. Um, support for the .mjs extension has been removed, at least for now. Uh, as I said earlier, the proxy object has been replaced with a cut with custom proxy support. Also, prop types definitions are now automatically stripped out of production builds. Um, this will be a default behavior. So as you can see, there's not too much to worry about for most applications as far as breaking changes go. Now, as far as upgrading your existing applications that use Create React App 1, the React blog, the official post uh, announcing its release, it, it says that you shouldn't feel pressured to update anything. Um, if you're satisfied with the current features and its performance and reliability, then keep using the version you have. Um, they also mentioned that it may be a good idea to let the new version stabilize a little bit before upgrading to, you know, upgrading your production applications. And this is true of all software. for updates. If you have something that's in production, it's working fine, you know, you're happy with its performance and all that stuff. Don't feel pressure to upgrade unless of course there's like a security issue or something like that. Okay, so that's going to be it guys. If you know of any other features or you have any feedback, let us know in the comments. Follow me on social media if you want and I'll see you next time.